Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about one of the worst investments you could have ever made and they were some judge promos. Now the judge promos for a long time it was always assumed they would be over 10 or 20 or even $30 but that no longer matters. The quality of the card matters although most judge promos have different artwork which is unique to the promo if the card is no good, the price will be pennies. So this card started at 100, briefly stayed at 50 before stabilizing at, I'd assume 40, and then plummeting to $5. So it is possible for you to get a judge promo that recently came out for $5, as long as you're okay with this particular promo. Now we're going to take a look at a few other ones. Magic Finance has changed drastically over the years and what used to be true is no longer true. Judge promos used to be very high, high in demand, all of them, as kind of um, a special promotional item that not many people ever got to see in a trade binder. Next, we'll talk about Genesis, which was, let's say, 45, then dropped to stabilizing at 35, and then now it is $7 today. Also, a Judge promo, and this time it's a little older from, looks like, 2014. The cards that they pick to be Judge promos have always been quite interesting, and some of them have been reprinted, as we'll see with the next one, which is Damnation which really affects their price. One of the compelling points I have and why I'm going over this video is to warn you. To warn you that just because someone said that it was a safe, in quote, investment, it doesn't mean anything in Magic. Magic cards themselves are not safe investments. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, reserve list this. Power 9 this. There's a lot of things that I would be concerned of if I had over $10,000 in reserve list or Power 9, which I no longer have, but I had before. So Damnation started at over 150, it looks like 170, goes down to 100, stabilizes, and then gets reprinted, and now it is $42 for a Judge promo damnation that just a year ago was almost a hundred dollars and two years ago was over a hundred dollars magic as an investment you cannot look at it as a traditional investment i was looking at my retirement fund and it has like 9.8 percent earnings a year on average you might say oh well look at power nine look at this stuff if you've ever sold Power 9 or you have sold dual lands, the condition of the dual land is extremely important. Extremely important. It is the difference between $500 for a near mint one and $400 is a smudge or a simple crinkle or just even a minor blemish. I don't like that, right? It's not, in my opinion, completely fungible and the fact that it's like a stock that you can't really if oh i wrinkled the paper that the stock is on oh still worth the same amount of money charlotte's agent this one went from 150 all the way down to 11 things can change in magic in a heartbeat and that includes a reserve list and that includes a power nine and that's against the grain there's a lot of people online who sell this stuff who are telling you to invest 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 Okay, if you have like a 401k and you paid off your home and you really didn't have anything you better to invest in, no mutual funds that you really liked or bonds or anything and you paid off all your loans, then maybe you should invest in Power9 and Black Lotuses and stuff like that. But the people selling them, they're professional salespeople. They sell a lot of Power9. You are not a professional salesperson. You are going to get destroyed. So I was watching a video on Rudy's channel and the person gets bargained like they want one price that I imagine was agreed on before she took the plane ride over then they get there and they get hammered in price and they have nothing they can do 
They just have to accept it. So when you look at that video, you know that um, lady is not going to leave without money. And the vendor knows that as well. So although many people think it's a fair deal and it's okay, who are you going to sell your Power 9 to? You're going to sell for buy list? Good luck getting buy list near mint prices on your Power 9 because they will... I have sold Power 9, dual lands, and very expensive cards to vendors. And Strike Zone Online has always been fantastic. I have sold my dual lands, my extra dual lands to Strike Zone Online in the past, and they have been very good in person. But other vendors I've taken it to, they look like, hey, you... There's a fingerprint on it. I was like, wait, that's your fingerprint. What the blank are you talking about? <laughs> like, you put your fingerprints on it. Like, well, you know, now that it has my fingerprint, we have to deduct $15. And you're like, nickel and diming you is just not really an enjoyable experience. So my point is, things that used to be valuable in Magic may not be valuable a year from now. And one of the core things that I grew up thinking would have always value, I mean, to think of a Charlotte's agent foil being... 11 bucks when it was over 200 not over 200 over 150 and over 100 for a long time I think the damnation being a hundred dollar foil for quite a bit of time and being in high demand and then just plummeted into oblivion nothing has changed on the card nothing has changed on the card just the market has changed my gut feeling about the reserve list is something is going to happen I cannot tell you when or I cannot tell you what, but there's too much money in it. And whenever you have too much money in something, that's not necessarily a good sign. That's kind of like when people are hoarding and they're buying these dual lands, these underground seeds for 400 and they're trying to hopefully sell for 800 in two years and they're expecting this growth. It's quite interesting because Magic cards are pieces of cardboard that can be easily duplicated. I've seen some counterfeits that, like, you guys think I'm crazy, but the smell really gives it away. Because if you smell old cards, they smell like old Magic cards. They have a certain smell to them. I guess because I have so much bulk, right, <laughs> that I just know the scent. But these cards smell like poker cards. They smell like new poker cards, uh, kind of plasticky. But I've seen scans where I can't tell the difference. And I was on Magic Trading League, and that's all made Magic Trading Online League, and that's all you would look at 300 DPI scans. And you would base whether or not it's a real card based on the 300 DPI scan. So I got really good at figuring out hmm, this is fake, hmm, this is real, this is fake, this is real. I've seen some stuff that scans so well that it's just crazy. Um, so that's concerning. And the second concern I really have is I don't believe most of the dual lands are owned by regular people. I believe they're owned by stores and speculators. Because if you're Star City Games and you have an asset that you buy for 200 and you can resell 500 later and it keeps gaining prices, keeps gaining money, then you're in, you want to keep buying that asset, right? You don't want to keep sell it because then you have to rebuy it at a high price. Star City Games has enough history on Underground C to understand that if they sell it for 200, then they have to rebuy for 400, then they have to sell it for 500, then let's say it goes up to 1,000, they have to rebuy for 800. Why not just keep it? And that they're not the only ones thinking of this way. So when Star City Games raises the buy list on a card, it's not because they actually want more of the cards, because they have enough of the card and they're establishing a bottom. So the point of raising a buy list is not to buy more cards sometimes. It depends on the card, right? Sometimes it's to say, hey, this is the bottom, this is the floor, and any other copies under it will take, and then eventually the new floor. They did this with pretty much everything. So they did it with dual lands multiple times, Zendikar fetch lands being the most iconic or most known example of something like this happening from star city games and now they're doing with the con fetch lands is it wrong no they have every right to do so and they're incentivized heavily to do so but at the same time 
I worry about the health of Legacy. Yeah, you have a $500 card, you have a $2,000 playset, but if you don't have anyone to play with, what is the card actually worth? Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.